to another video and today I'm going to do a review of a movie from 1960 it's called The Criminator. Um, this was one of his earlier ones and critics uh, considered this to be uh, a B movie. Mm. Music uh, fans will uh, be familiar with this term. I've never quite understood it. Uh, I guess it's sort of movies that were good that no one watched. Uh, anyway, there's going to be a, uh, a slide with the details. Uh, music by Johnny Dankworth, uh, that jazz aficionado. And in the cast, in the lead role as Johnny Bannon is Stanley Baker. He's a self-confessed criminal type. Sam Wanamaker is uh, another uh, prison uh, inmate. He's Mike Carter. And then we got uh, the ladies. My, Maggie uh, is played by Jill Bannon. She's Bannon's old flame. And uh, Margaret Sand plays Suzanne, who becomes his new flame. Uh, there's a lot of uh, very famous British TV actors in this movie. Uh, Patrick McGee, uh, for example, Ken Cope, Patrick Weimark, uh, and uh, Tom Bell as well, a very young Tom Bell who plays Flynn. Uh, I'm going to get on to uh, this movie now and uh, let's get started. Being seen then as a poker game taking place inside a prison. Obviously, it's a pretty easy going atmosphere. Right at the centre of it is Bannon. Banyan played by Baker, and then a new arrival to the institution comes. His name's Kelly, and it creates an excited atmosphere. Uh, and uh, it's really uh, puts the movie into some sort of context. Uh, he's checked out by the screws, of course. And then a chant and a song greets him as he, uh, he, as he uh, comes into the uh, general uh, population area. He's regarded as a wrong un, and Johnny meets him with a whistle, symbolic, symbolic of you getting nicked. This captures the mood of prison life immediately. The inmates and the screws. A big part of this movie is creating real situations, real life scenarios. None of that Hollywood gloss here. Uh, Banyan is getting ready for his release shortly after spending a number of years inside. He's a thief and attribution. And Johnny has a number of fellow inmates who look up to him as the daddy and he immediately sets out to finger Kelly. And one of his disciples carries out the deadly deed or the dirty deed. And Kelly's built to, beaten to a horrible pulp. At the same time, there's a deafening noise by all the other inmates. And one of the inmates literally has a fit to create distraction so that the screws are unable to rescue Kelly. So we get a very clear picture of life in prison. Now, once he's out, he returns to his semi-glamorous life. He's a famous criminal, you see. He has a party to celebrate his release. He then meets Suzanne, and he's not exactly sort of desperate for affection, uh, as he uh, has an altercation with his ex, Jill Bennett. But then he ends up with this new girl in his flat. This time there's a scene which is quite risque and quite sexy. We actually see her naked coming out of a bath. Whoopee. Uh, well, anyway, then we follow the events which lead to the uh, future robbery. Him and his fellow cohorts, they hit a sort of security van. But unfortunately, the notes, the bang notes, have been tampered with. And as a result, Banyan gets nicked again and he ends up having to go back inside. And he's greeted as almost a sort of a king as his re-arrival uh, uh, happens. And then we return to life within the walls of the prison. The film then follows uh, towards a plan to get him transferred to uh, a, a lower security unit. Transfer uh, is basically seen uh, by the authorities as a benefit for the protection of other inmates who he's out to get and this is a bit of a setup really and what then follows is that Banyan who has buried some cash from the previous heist in the middle of a field is out to retrieve it and he escapes his uh, he, he escapes from the guards 
and he's wanting to escape from his lengthy sentence. Uh, but then, uh, as I say, the bad guy trying to get hold of his dosh, he's then double-crossed by one of his inmate friends outside who has managed to kidnap the girl and using it as leverage, we then get the finale involving these two thieves who are at each other's throats. And of course the police trying to smooth it all at the end. Not a bad movie really. Baker is very central to the movie. I like his delivery. He, this is very much up there with uh, one of the best in this area uh, alongside uh, Connery uh, and Kane of course. He is a uh, top billing and he really does fit the bill. Uh, it doesn't really matter whether he's the villain or whether he's the uh, so-called goody. There's those bad streaks that run through his character and he's able to transfer them to the screen perfectly. So I'd suggest you get to listen, watch this one then. It's called The Criminal, released in 1960, directed by Joseph Lucy and Spark, starring Stanley Baker.